Hello, I'm going to show you how to create a circuit in ORCAD Capture CIS that can charge an iPhone. This is what the circuit looks like, and I'm going to show you how to build that right now in Capture CIS. So open up ORCAD Capture CIS. You can use the light version or the full version. It's pretty much the same. And then choose New Project. If you don't have this menu, you can always go to File, New Project as well. Name your project iPhone charger choose piece by analog or mixed ad and for the location select browse i'm going to choose my desktop here select new folder and then name it something like iphone charger go into this folder called iphone charger choose select folder then click ok choose to create a blank project what the software will do is load the drawing area, I like to call it the working area, where you would place your components and build the circuit. So let's see here. Just waiting for the software to load. And we are good to go. When the icons are like when they have the color, that's when you know it's ready. Choose place part. What I'll do is open up the place part menu. You can also use the shortcut here, place part. All right, now what we'll need to do is add libraries that already have parts that we can use to build a schematic. You don't need to build part from scratch. So choose add library if you don't have these loaded already. You should be in the piece by folder, but if you're not, just go to cadence, SPB, tools, capture, library, piece spice. Then hit control A on your keyboard to select all of the libraries that contain the parts there. These libraries will load, and then we're going to place some components. So what would that look like? Let's see. We have three resistors, two capacitors, a voltage regulator, USB port, and uh, input voltage. I want to simulate this project, so I'm going to add components that can actually be simulated. Let's start with the three resistors. So hit resistor on your keyboard and analog library. Hit enter on your keyboard, and then the part will be attached to your cursor. Hit R on the keyboard to rotate the part before you place it, then click your left mouse button to place the component. You would place subsequent components there, so just keep placing or clicking to place the component. And then you would right click the work area, choose end mode. Next what we need are two capacitors. So let's go with C double click on C analog here hit R on your keyboard to rotate then place one capacitor to the left and one capacitor on the right right click and choose end mode next what we need is a ground uh, but before I place the ground I will go with a voltage source a voltage source of VDC DC voltage source we get from the source library so double click on that place it right there uh, let's see if it shows up. There we go. Now I'll place the ground. So you could choose place ground or just hit G on your keyboard. Go with the zero cap sim and click OK and then place the ground right here. A ground is always necessary for your circuit or schematic if you're going to simulate or any circuit because we need a ground reference for any circuit. All right. Next, we need a voltage regulator. I don't know which library the regulator is exactly but I know the part number. So go to place piece by component search. Now I would show you how to search for any component that you don't know the part number of, but there's a lot that goes into that. So for right now, I'll just give you the part number. So in here you would type in the LM, LM123AK. Hit enter on the keyboard. And then you select that part. You can either double click or hit enter on your keyboard to attach the component. Then place it on your schematic. Right click and choose end mode. The last thing we need to do is to make sure electricity gets through these things. Well, it's not the last thing, but it's the second to last thing. So I'll choose place wire or W on the keyboard. And then click on the very end where you would connect the component leads. Uh, 
Okay. Now when you click and place these wires, sometimes people like drag the mouse button, they hold on to the mouse button, the left mouse button, and um, they just hold down, uh, hold it down and then drag. Like, you don't wanna do that. You just wanna click release. So if you hear my mouse, you're like, click and let go. You just click and let go. Because if you drag the wire or hold the mouse button down while you're uh, creating the connection, you can like make unnecessary connection then and that gets really annoying. Um, all right, so now that everything is wired, is this done correctly? Well, let's go back to the schematic. Okay, we need wires that come out here to the USB port. So let's go back. Okay, so we'll place one out here. Now, if you wanna terminate a connection, just double click. Okay, this next wire, let's pull from here. Double click to end that. This is our USB port wires here. Let's see. Double click to end that. And then lastly, here's our wire from in between these two resistors. And double click to end that. Great. Right click the work area, choose end wire and now we need to change the values so double click here and instead of zero vdc make it something like 12 volts that's a standard voltage let's go with 10 microfarad so that's 10 u f there's no micro symbol it won't take a micro symbol you need to type in u double click on this one n type in 10 u f and then for these resistor values let's see what values we need 8.0 OK, uh, 220, and 6.04. OK, so 8.06 K. Then a 220 ohm resistor, very small resistance there. And then lastly, a, let's see if we can, 6.04. Yeah, there we go. OK, so. We have our resistances, our capacitance, and this is the circuit, but we're not done yet. I'm actually gonna show you how to simulate this circuit. So save, and then you can choose new simulation profile or P-Spice new simulation profile. Name it something like TR. You can name it whatever you want, really. Just make sure you use alphanumeric characters. I have the light version since my trial version expired. Um, if you have the full version, it's pretty much the same. Under the simulation settings here, I'm just waiting for this to load. Great. Now I'm going to go with the time domain transient for the analysis type. So we get to see how the voltage changes or what have you, uh, and as time progresses, let's go with two MS for milliseconds. I won't set a maximum step size. I'll just click apply, then click OK. What this is going to do is actually let us see what the voltage looks like uh, over time. So click on this voltage probe. This is a voltage probe or marker that allows you to actually see what the voltage will look like. So I'm waiting for it to place here. Okay. All right. Just ignore that. All right. So I'm still in voltage marker placement mode. So place that one there. Place another marker right here. And then place another marker on this last line. Right click and choose end mode. Now run the simulation. So if you run P Spice. Just wait for the software to load this P Spice icon here. And let's see what we get. All 
and voila, five volt output and the proper voltage is needed for the proprietary iPhone charging voltage levels. Just over two volts for each of those. And that verifies that this circuit is working just fine. Make sure you save your project and that is how you create a schematic for an iPhone charger. Thanks for watching.